What's up guys, Charles, MX Revival, mxrevival.com. Today we're gonna do a mini revival on this 2015 and a half KTM factory edition. I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while. I'll be able to show you guys how to clean up your bikes without going all the way into full build status where the things scattered across the shop and apart for a month or two. I'm also gonna be going over the cost of everything because of course everybody wants to know what am I in this for. So by the end of this video, we will have transformed this bike. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. You know, I'm happy to help. I wanna make sure you get the most out of your experience with your motorcycles and thank you for watching. One of the best ways to breathe life back into your machine is a new wheel set. Brand new plastics and graphics will be used. We've come up with a great theme that will accompany the original factory edition look. So in the simplest terms, we're gonna be fully breaking down this bike as far as the body goes. We're gonna take the body off in the tank and we're gonna do a really deep clean on the engine and any nook and cranny we can get into to just really make this thing pop when it goes back together. We'll be doing a little bit of additional cleanup on things such as the exhaust pipe. It's pretty scratched up. The intent is to keep some major components like the seat and the pipe. The idea is to get a whole new look without breaking the bank. Of course, as is with every bike, I'm gonna be getting into some things that need to be replaced anyways. I can tell that it needs grips. We haven't accounted for that yet. Yet. frame guards, maybe the plastic shrouds that go around the bark busters, miscellaneous things, so I'll be keeping a list as I take this bike apart and see things that maybe aren't quite right. These bikes are notorious for breaking rear brake springs on the brake pedal, so maybe something like that will come up. In fact, I know something like that will come up, maybe an air filter. So I'll be keeping my eyes peeled for things like that that need additional replacement. So I hope you guys find this useful. Let's get to it. So here is our subject, 2015 and a half factory edition. As you can see, it's an overall pretty good condition, but it does have a bunch of stuck dirt on the exhaust and the engine, and the graphics are pretty beat up. Swing arm and aluminum is pretty stained. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at everything, see what we can find aside from what we've already purchased for the bike. And so I need to break the body down and get that off of this bike so I can do a deep scrub. But to be honest, it has been so cold and rainy and we've had hail and all this and that, which is a huge surprise for California. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the tires because the ground is hot and I can throw them out in the sun and they'll become much more pliable in order to put them onto the new wheel set. While those are heating up, we'll go over some of the components we've picked up here. We have the brand new wheel set. These are my favorite, SM Pro Platinum. Um, love these wheels you guys have seen them on my bikes great success with them really light really strong then just chain sprockets tubes rotors rotor hardware loctite for the rotor hardware things like that so all the basics to get a complete wheel set going in addition to also having these wheels as backups for racing or spares if you get a flat and don't have time to change between motos There you have it. There are the completed wheel sets, tires, tubes, locks, strips, brakes, and drive. All right, guys, got done with the wheels in the nick of time. It is starting to get cloudy and cold and looks like the rain is coming back. When I say cloudy and cold, I mean California, cloudy and cold, probably in the 60s or maybe even warmer. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind or not. Maybe hear the uh, rain starting to fall on the roof of the shop. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna bring the bike inside get it up in the air, start pulling the body off a tank, everything I need out of my way in order to bring this thing back outside and start giving it a really deep scrub. And if we end up working in the rain, then we end up working in the rain, so whatever. All 
All right, guys, as mentioned, as I'm taking this bike apart, I'm already seeing stuff that's broken, about to break, about to fail. You wanna keep your eye on this sort of thing when you're taking your bikes apart for this purpose or routinely or just every once in a while, you know, pop your seat off and see what's going on in there. She's definitely a little dirty. It's been a while since anyone made their way under the old tank, which is cool. This guy here is looking a little uh, unfortunate. Uh, rest of the bike, just generally dirty like you would expect, right? So what I found that was a little concerning is none of this dirt, totally normal, whatever. But this guy right here, this wire has been getting absolutely crushed by the seat. Now what I determined that wire to be was, as I traced it out, it led down to this aftermarket cooling fan, which is great, it's a super cool fan. But in addition to it being routed a bit poorly in terms of wiring, whoever did that for this customer in the past, just could have routed it a little bit better. It's not the end of the world. And additionally, uh, this thing is hanging on by just one more fastener here. So also not the end of the world, but it was about to be either landing on this pipe and melting a little bit uh, on the next ride or next race. And that's about the last thing you want. Right now you might be wondering, how's he gonna get that motorcycle back outside to wash it? <laughs> Willpower and sheer strength, of course. All right, boys and girls, we have been scrubbing for a couple of hours, and as you can see, things are looking much nicer. Everything has a nice shine to it. We have chipped away at the several years of gunk, grime, and scum. Aluminum is looking a heck of a lot better. All of the dirt and grime stuck in the wiring harness is gone. All of the residual oil residue from the valve cover and gasket is gone. Engine's looking pretty good. Swing arm is looking almost new. Fork lugs are looking cherry, nice and bright. All the dirt I can find has pretty much been eradicated from this thing for the most part. Pipe came out great. This is basically just a bunch of elbow grease. These are pretty much the tricks of the trade for this part of the job. We have some mag wheel cleaner for rough cast like the swing arm, the wire brush for heavy pitting and stains in the same areas, stiff bristle brush for getting into tight spots. This is just a regular old wash mitt with a small bucket and in the bucket I have a mix mixture of Simple Green and Dawn dish soap. And then of course we have a little bit of Scotch-Brite and that is actually how I got the exhaust to turn from a tan yellow, sort of nasty looking deal to the bright stainless. So like I said, elbow grease, a little bit of time and you are on your way to a good looking machine. If you guys are interested, I have a separate video that shows the more practical application of the utensils I just showed, the aluminum brightener, Scotch-Brite and so on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and link that up here in one of these corners. For the sake of this video, we're going to keep it moving since it's not really about how to wash your bike. But for now, the bike is looking really good. It's completely degreased. It's degunked. All the aluminum looks great. We have a really solid foundation for when we start to put all of the new parts on. And this really is the main part that gives you the most bang for your buck. If you're going to be throwing money at your bike and you're not doing a complete full build, spending three, four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000. This is where everything really starts to shine from just digging in a little bit deeper, taking a little more time, and a, a couple hours is gonna save you a couple thousand. So 
when this is done, it's gonna look amazing and let's keep on rolling with that. Guys, bike's finally done. I cannot wait to show this thing to the customer. I know he's gonna be excited because I'm super excited. I love the way it turned out. We got a few choice components on the bike, brand new. We spent a good amount of time with the elbow grease. The bike came out awesome. Next time he lines up on the gate, he's going to be feeling good and I would be willing to bet he's going to race pretty damn well also. I know that's how it is for me when my bikes are nice and fresh, my gear's new. You guys feel it, you know what I'm talking about. So what do we do to this bike? Well, starting with a fresh set of wheels, we went and had it opted for complete sets that included brakes and drive, aka sprockets and hardware. Uh, reason being, it's nice to have a spare set of wheels around to either sell, recoup some money, or B, have track side or trail side if you're out riding and you don't have the means to swap a tire quickly or a tube. It might just come in handy as a spare wheel set. You know, maybe a, a buddy has a KTM also. You can loan them to a friend. So that's sort of the idea behind that. Of course, there's nothing like a set of fresh tires. We went ahead and did a set of Dunlop MX3S. They're my favorite wheel and tire combo. These tires just freaking hook up and they are super light. They're a couple pounds lighter than Bridgestone's just the rear tire alone. That's a big deal. Of course everything inside the wheels is new as you saw. Rim strips, rim locks, tubes, rim lock dress kit. Went ahead with the black bolt motorcycle hardware bolts for the sprocket. Those match the black sprocket really well. Next up we have plastics and graphics. Another huge piece that ties the puzzle in. I became an authorized dealer for decal works not too long ago and I have been just utterly impressed with the quality, the turnaround time. Tom Keenan, if you're watching this, thanks for everything you do, buddy. We've been making a lot of people happy and that is just the best part of this. So when I can get a kit turned around from start to completion in one week, from design to approval, printed and shipped, that's just like, Awesome, you get your stuff fast, I love it. We went ahead and kept the navy blue in this bike knowing that it is a factory edition and knowing that we were going to keep the stock dark seat that comes only on factory editions. It was in good enough shape to reuse and so I wanted to keep that theme with the anodized orange in the wheels, the dark blue of the seat in the graphics and sort of keep it very factory edition. This uh, silencer behind me here, I went ahead and took it off, masked the ends, speed blasted the core, then used a couple of Prime MX pads from Cameron at Prime MX, go check him out these pads are awesome and just sort of buffed up the stainless end caps on the pipe and it looks amazing so partitioning the pipe in sections like that gives it a really unique look and makes it look very uniform makes it look as though you purchased it that way so all the scratches are gone the ratty stickers gone now we ended up with something that looks a lot like the factory cast swing arm which is really really cool some scotch right on the header a bunch of just deep cleaning and brushing i used 50 50 dawn dish soap and simple green that is a lund mx trick thank you lundy and besides that this bike really just has my personality my taste my style written all over it it's just what i gravitate towards it's what i love i love being able to share that with people and if any of you have gotten to know me over the last three or four years doing this you guys know exactly what i'm talking about of course with bikes like these you can always go way bigger you can go full build style that wasn't the point of this video that wasn't the budget we had set for this bike so for a couple thousand dollars we are in and we are out the bike looks amazing there isn't anybody who wouldn't be happy with this bike in fact looking at the customer in invoice right now the total on all the parts listed here wheels tires plastics graphics a few other miscellaneous things like chains sprockets all the hardware for the rotors hardware for the sprockets loctite for the sprocket hardware rim locks everything you saw in the video two thousand one hundred and twenty eight dollars and sixty one cents 
So with labor included, under $3,000, this thing is ready to rip. All new look, all new style. Got the bike looking good, have the owner feeling good. That's what it's all about without breaking the bank. Like I said, I can't wait to see his face. And thank you guys for watching this video. I have another one of these coming up very soon. I'm going to take a 2006 CRF 450R and graph the 2020 body style onto it. So stay tuned for that. Go ahead and like this video. If you would, please think about subscribing. There's all kinds of moto stuff going on on this blossoming channel. If you guys like what you see here and you'd like to learn more about the parts I used, head on over to mxrevival.com. Go ahead and use the contact link to get a hold of me or leave a comment in the comments below. I'd love to help out. If you have any questions at all, I'd be glad to answer them. I appreciate every one of you. Thanks so much for watching, guys.